Good afternoon and welcome to Flat Earth Debate. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you're new to this channel be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to join the debate live there is a link in the info box below this video and I will periodically put the link into the chat box so you can join the show live. There are only two rules. If you swear you will be ejected. I may give you a couple of warnings but this rule will be more stringently enforced than it ha perhaps has been on other shows but I will ask you politely once and then eject you so please do not swear. If you are ejected please only return on the next show which is the second rule so the first rule being do not swear the second rule being if you're asked to leave please only return on the next debate obviously there are plenty of people out there with sock accounts i'm talking to you in these shows there may be some dead air at the beginning of these broadcasts so uh, i will transition across to my slideshow just so i can share the link on facebook and twitter and skype and i would encourage anybody who's currently watching this to do exactly the same as i say if you would like to join the show live there is a link in the info box and in well at least currently in the chat box until that flies away with the chat and if you're new to this channel be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the flat earth debate I've just shared the show on some social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Skype, various other platforms. While we're waiting for our first guest to join, I may as well say straight away that if you were the first guest, you would be entirely unopposed. The purpose of this show isn't necessarily to debate with me. So the purpose is to express your views about the shape of the earth, whatever they may be. So if you're a concave earther, cell earther, hollow earther, globe earther, flat earther, you name it, you're a 
uh, were more than welcome to join and express those views. As I say, for the time being, at least you would be expressing them entirely unopposed. So my purpose in being here, as I say, is not to debate with the guests who join the panel, but moreover to just regulate the panel and make sure that uh, it's not getting sniped or having pornography played and that people know that they are actually welcome to join the show by clicking on the link in the info box. Um, all I would ask to the guests who you do join is that you don't talk over each other. So far on the 10 that have preceded this show, the 10 debate shows that have preceded this show, it's been fairly cordial. It has got fairly heated at times as well, which is why I gave my disclaimers at the beginning of this feed, which is to say that were you to join, I would be probably a bit more strict on these later streams in terms of my requests to keep the language to a minimum. So yes, as I say, if you'd like to join the show, there is a link in the info box below this video. It's pretty much still on the chat feed that I can see. Uh, I will give a few shout outs to the chat. So good to have you here, critical thinking always, and Funtz Clark. Thank you for being here, much obliged. Nichi, Nichios Nose, I hope I'm pronouncing that correct. Good to have you here. It says morning, Nathan. It's actually 2.15 in the afternoon here, but good morning to you. Sean G, thank you for being here. Nice to see you. Say no to mind control, says Funtz Clark. I agree entirely. Absolutely. Say no <laughs> when you're in those situations when you know you're under mind control. <laughs> Uh, yes. Flat World Takeover, good to see you here. I think that's probably it. I may transition back to my photographs and say one last plug. So if you are new to this channel, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to join the debate live, there is a link in the info box. There are only two rules. One is please do not swear. And the second is if you are ejected, you are warmly welcome to return on the next stream. So in that, I will transition back across to my photographs, pop myself on mute and await our first guest if there is one hopefully we will see somebody on this debate we shall see May as well chat to the live stream chat feed in these transitional bits before we get a guest as these bits probably get fast forwarded over anyway. So I can kind of talk to the chat without anybody really listening because they this bit probably doesn't get listened to on the replay unless there's something flashing up on screen, which there isn't, other than the Globusters logo. Globusters, my apologies. Ghostbusters, I should say. Anyway, so it's been nice the last couple of days. We've had Stephen, Patricia, and to a certain extent, we saw him arrive, Mark Sargent, um, filling us in on the arrival to the conference out in Raleigh and it was really really nice seeing all the people arrive and you know glad hand uh, the people that were already there and express their views on the flat earth and it was just nice it was very very exciting I won't lie watching all of the different people arrive at the flat earth conference so it should go really well they're going to be off to the um, unveiling of the billboard so that should be exciting today and then uh, that's pretty much it for today as far as I know I don't know if they're doing anything else but I'm sure they'll all have a lot of fun but um yeah they will travel some distance to be there 
and it was nice. Martin was there with us on the call. I know he's in the chat at the moment. He's on with me later. May as well plug all of you who are in the chat. Thank you for being here, multi tom tom and raised by gypsies. Good morning to you too. Um, yeah, Martin will bid me be with me later, uh, along with Jibby Jedi and hopefully Zoe Scribner, who was a little bit ill yesterday, although we did chat with her, so I'm hoping she'll be well enough today to do the show. And we're going to be chatting about history in terms of the heliocentric model and perhaps the flat earth deception in terms of its timeline, which we'll be discussing. I'm not going to put anything out at this stage. As I'm completely unopposed, I'm going to feel free to use the platform to talk about flat earth. Why not? Why the hell not? If anybody comes, I'll keep my mouth buttoned. Until someone else comes, that is. Lottie says, good to see you. Good to see you, JJ. Thanks for being here. Do I think force with the line would work? Asks Nichio's nose. Um, yeah, why not? You know, as far as I'm concerned, the Earth is obviously and observably flat, and I think any measurement of it with 90 degree perfect right angled bolted together pieces would demonstrate that. So, yeah, I think force the line would work, if I'm honest. I think we already have examples of it, though, in, in engineering. So, I, I don't think it's all that necessary. You know, there's a couple of bridges that they bullshit about having engineered in curvature. I just don't believe it, though. Um, the rest of them are. Exactly that, they're just the force the line experiment. Just go to the keys. Flat Earth Christian Truthers, good to have you here. Uktina Walker, we were talking about you yesterday. We said that if there was to be a competition for a Flat Earth leader, we would just hand you the keys to that car and say, here you go, Uktina, you can run the thing. You can be our elder. <laughs> Golden Gate doesn't. I assume you you are saying that Golden Gate Bridge doesn't account for curvature. There's Sean G. Hopefully saying such flat earth heresy might encourage some globeheads to join. We shall see. Greetings, Dredge Society, is it? Good to have you here. Nope, says Sean G. I think he's agreeing with me in the negative. Nope, it doesn't have any curvature accounted. Ah, it says we're breaking up. Well, let me tell you this. The stream is perfect, but it goes out in very high definition, so it's 1080p. If you are having a crappy stream it's because of your connection i can guarantee you of that because i'm looking at my figures in terms of what's dropped how many frames now i think coincidentally there has been 41 or so drop frame oh no there we go it's now dropping frames amazing that the second you look at it it drops a couple of frames but i've dropped less than 100 frames and given that it's 30 frames a second you know less than three seconds worth of frames over the last 13 seconds is, is not even noticeable. No one's going to notice that. But if you are having a poor quality feed, it will be the case that you just need to lower the resolution settings. So just click on the little cog if you're on a PC or Mac and just lower it down from 1080 to 720 or 480 or whatever will give you a decent stream. But it should be perfect for everybody. Some computers just don't automatically drop the stream quality and will try and get it to your computer in the highest possible quality some people set it to do that way not realizing that obviously your computer can't do more than it can do or the internet connection moreover um so yeah just lower the stream settings um but for those of you who do have a good connection it means that when we do have demonstrations as mr grimm did on one of them he had a ball bearing spun in a magnetic field or electromagnetic field and then the guy literally puts a, a pen onto the ball bearing to demonstrate that it's being spun up by the electromagnetic field. Fairly simple stuff, realistically pretty simple. Um, but it was nice to actually have the resolution to see that indelible black pen go onto the ball bearing, and you need a reasonably high resolution feed to do that, um, even to get it to scale down, so you can still see it at lower resolutions. So you have to start at a reasonably res reasonably high resolution, which is for anybody who's 
familiar with this channel, you'll see, you'll have seen me repeating various streams, various old streams, um, and doing tech experiments on my other two channels, Nathan Oakley and Oakley Cord. And the reason for that was to get this stream to the quality that it is. I mean, I'm looking at it now on my iPad with a picture of Alice in Wonderland. Sorry if you're playing Guess the Movie. Um, but yeah, it looks super crispy. You know, it looks really, really good. And th that's the point. So that when there are people playing out videos and they don't maximise the screen, um, you can still actually make out what's on the video. It's not just some fuzzy mess. So that's that was the point of me going to all that effort. Um, but yeah, you, there's definitely no dropped frames at my end so it's it's good it, you know the stream is perfect and um, just lower your resolution if it doesn't look so formerly i've been trying to entice globe heads by saying flat earth rhetoric but i don't think it's necessary i'm pretty sure that now that i've done 10 of these people are aware that they are running and if they are so inclined they will join we shall see i'm only going to run this show for a couple of hours maybe that'll entice people there won't be endless time to do these i've done them at various lengths just to see how i felt about doing them and regardless if we have nobody join for an hour we will have an hour of debating if that's the case good to have you here horse wearing people costume and frank buccio buccio however you say it good to have you here thank you for being here arwin good to see you my friend Hopefully we'll have you on. Good participant in the past, for certain. Scrolling back up through the chat, see if I've missed anybody. If I've not said hello to you, my apologies. Good to have you here all the same, supporting the channel. If you want to stick me a few quid in the super chat, wonderful, I'll be much obliged. So far, with these, not so good, if I'm honest. Arwin says, Alice in Wonderland was said to be the story about the Federal Reserve and Wall Street. Is that so? I've heard Alice in Wonderland claim to be all sorts of things, I'm not going to lie. It was on the Alex Jones show like five years ago, says Arwin. Fair enough. Barqui, good to have you here. Says hello everybody. Flat World Takeover. Did I say hello to you already? If not, good to have you here. Good to see you there, Lyle Ohio. Your video the other day, um, I think it was maybe a day or maybe two days ago, about putting filters onto cameras, that generated quite a, a heated potato debate. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, with differing opinions. I may as well just say this in the live stream again. I think this probably won't get that much attention when it's played back. People will just want to see the arguing. Um, but yeah, I agreed with your video. Having not made that much or taken that much attention to what the moon specifically was doing as it as it rose in regards to its positioning in regards to the moon, having them in front and behind. Now, having not paid attention, when I listened to your video, I just thought, yeah, that makes perfect sense. You put a filter on and it changes how it looks. And so I, that, that night after watching your video, I went out and did my job outside and watched the moon rise between the clouds. And I squinted, and obviously I don't have filters, it's only the naked eye. But as far as I could see, no matter what I did, it looked like it was coming up through the clouds, in front and behind. And it got me to thinking about putting filters on to look at the sun in terms of how it approaches. Now, if you look at the sun by the naked eye, obviously the amount of light that it is producing increases. It is getting bigger, there's no other way of describing it. But you put a filter on and it presents a different story when you actually see the disk of the sun. And if you were to ask someone like David Weiss deep inside the rabbit hole, he describes it as a beautiful dance between the lensing and refraction of the light and then the non-lensing as the sun is directly overhead where it would be at its biggest or closest. And that leaves you with the illusion um, of it being at the same size with a filter. And while I can understand and appreciate that explanation, it doesn't satisfy me enough because, in my view, it puts on the presupposition that the sun is a physical object therefore would give you an angular change 
and I don't necessarily know that that's the case, especially as you can change what it does with filters, you know, which is kind of bizarre, you know, for a, for a physical object. Yes, it's emitting light, but, you know, there's all sorts of different effects that we are having on it. And the bottom line is we don't know what it is, so therefore we don't know what the filter is doing. So, yeah, we can see the effect of the filter, but... Like I say, we don't know how it's changing the original object if we don't know what the original object is. Um, so it's a tricky one. The, the sun and the clouds behind the moon and in front of the moon, yeah, it certainly presents as being local. You know, to the naked eye, it looks like it's coming up through the clouds. It looks local. There's no other way of describing it. Close. Um, but yeah, then you stick a filter on and yeah, it looks as described in the heliocentric model. And uh, yeah. I've got no further words on that. I'm not going to draw any conclusions either way. I'm just saying it's it's extremely interesting. So thank you for that. Dale Ohio, much obliged. Very thought-provoking stuff. Let's see if we've got any new people. Bill G, good to have you here. Are any of you going to get in here and debate? I'm just going to listen to me waffle on. Good to see you, Joven Trendmaker. Sup, Nathan Oakley. Oh, sup, Satan Oakley, he says. Good to see you, Joven Trendmaker, who smells, apparently, I've heard. He's been reliably informed he has a bit of an odour problem. So does Joven, poor sod. Never mind, it's all good. Hello, Brandon Cook, good to have you here. Says hello all. Say hello to Brandon, everybody. Got to be honest, I thought somebody would join by now to uh, state their rhetoric. Bill G says, I'm at work. If I wasn't, I would jump on and keep you company if you ask nicely. Good to see you, Mr. Grimm. Thank you for being here, former participant. Nichi one knows says I'll keep you company Nathan lol if I can get on my phone of course you can just click on the link in the info box that gives me an opportunity to do a plug why not so if you are new to this channel be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the flat earth debate because of course at this stage the debate is absolutely riveting and you definitely want to keep up to date with it so yes be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification icon if you'd like to join the debate which again is riveting and you'd be totally unopposed in your views if you would like to state them click on the link in the info box below this video i may actually stick a uh no i won't spam the chat why not i've gone to the trouble of checking that it's in the limp info box and it does actually appear there yes it does thank the lord so yes if you'd like to join on your phone it is just as easy just click on that link it will take you through the sign-in process and take you to the main page for google plus hangouts on air um, please mute your microphone when you join and just simply unmute when you want when you have something to say if you are joining from a pc or mac please be sure to mute the stream that you are listening to now before you join the show so the actual stream that you are watching to click on the link that needs to be muted otherwise you'll cause feedback so yes other than that that means you can keep in touch with the people who are in the chat if you want to pay attention to that some people find it a distraction if they are debating with somebody individually but um that's the way to do it we have been joined let's see if we can hear anything from our friend how are you doing oh we've also got arwin hello can't hear anything from them but, uh, that's probably my audio problem hopefully you guys can hear them turn off my camera while I sort out my audio problem and leave these two to introduce themselves while I figure out why I can't hear them. Bear with me just one second, chaps. Hey, hello. Candle. Candle. Yeah, there we go. Right. Now I can hear you. So. Yes, sir. 
Sorry about that. I should actually make sure I can one actually or two hear you. Your online videos. Oh really? Yeah. What do you think? Huh? What do you think about I, it? I I also believe the Earth to be a flat plane, so you know we we got similar similar points of interest. I think you go into some some interesting theories. Me, I'm just here trying to to figure things out. All right. For how long? Uh, you know, this is actually a pretty recent uh, excursion for me, if you will. Uh, oh. I'm probably only maybe six months into the whole interest in flat Earth. Okay. You know, when I was when I was younger, I had my own little questions about mainly gravity. I didn't understand how things could be sucked in, yet not sucked in at the same time. Because when this came along and I started looking into it, I was like, huh, this is a very interesting thing to look into. You know? And how did you bump into it? Crazy story. Uh, one of my friends actually was at a flea market and they walked by a picture of the globe on the back of a turtle yeah you know we know we we see it now as the plane on the back of the three elephants on the turtle you know the i think it's the mayan or something like that that's a hindu model is it hindu okay um i'm not you know particularly adept in all the knowledge to debate and stuff but I'm very interested in it. But uh, I looked into the, I was trying to find an image online of the world turtle and with the globe on his back. But all I kept getting was the flat earth model on the back. Huh. So a friend, yeah, a friend had mentioned to me maybe four months prior that, you know, he was looking into the flat earth theory. And I did, you know, what most people do, you laugh him off and, you're kind of like, what? That doesn't make sense. You know, the edge, you fall off, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, <Yep. laughs> so. Yeah, the assumption of outer space. We're right. Space. Yeah, no, I, it's... I just went back to sleep. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how they use it. Like, uh, we dream so much about space. It's been interwoven into our culture and into our visual studies, into, every, in, into our media. So it becomes right. our dream. And they use oh, this. Exactly. They use this with everything. They use and our would... dream against us. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, they give us, you know, all these uh, little pieces to let our mind really wander and fill in all the blanks to get ourselves fully emotionally immersed in the theory of space. Uh, recently, when on a binge and watched Brian Mullins videos. I think he's got like eight or 10 of them. And from a structural engineer standpoint, if he's having problems with this, you know, trying to understand it, you know, it's, it's not as simple as, yeah, we live on a globe, it spins through space and no, that's, that's what we do. <laughs> the inconsistencies are vast. But the system of the globe doesn't lean on correctness, on things fitting. It, it leans on our dream. Was, uh, it, it leans on our dreams and it leans on our suspension of disbelief when we dream. And that, that's how with NASA videos, you know? When you look at it, it's always spacey music. People, when they look at it, they dream like oh wow oh, always it's all presented as a dream it always touches dreamlike aspects they try to do that to get you Hello? into the dream okay yeah well, I'm, I'm waking up from this dream you know i see flatness but the science they have their there are witty little ways to make you doubt what you see, you know. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm, I'm trying to. Involved. Oh yeah, absolutely. Tired you don't believe in a hierarchy is intellectual peer pressure based. So. Oh yeah, if you don't believe in the globe, you're basically not smart enough to hang out with us. Yeah. Good We've morning. Been joined by Hello. Lewis. How are you doing, Lewis? I'm doing all right today. Excellent stuff. So just a moment ago, I'd like to respond to something that was said a moment ago, is that the globe's always presented in a dreamlike state. And I think that might just be your perception because humans dream. I mean, dreaming uh, is a very powerful thing. In fact, uh, and I mean, this may seem irrelevant, but I think it's entirely relevant. Uh, that's how prostitutes are able to get repeat business and outcompete each other is the literal dreams that their clients have. That's why whenever you're with a woman, you have dreams about them after that for a long time, no matter how good or bad the connection with that person is. So, I mean, at the core of us, dreaming is very important and it's something that happens to everybody. So I think it's in your mind that other things that are very important seem dreamlike. Now, Lewis, what's the difference between a dream and a fantasy? And what's uh, the fantasy, difference between NASA and prostitutes? A yeah. fantasy you make up uh, on your own and play it and make it better as you go. And it's built on uh, your intrinsic desires. And a dream is something that you may not necessarily want, but it's there and it's based on your past experiences so a fantasy is more set in the future about what you want and a dream is more about what you liked okay so in your example of a prostitute we like sex right i mean i enjoy it sure um, right uh so if we like sex we already had sex with a prostitute now we're fantasizing about what we could do the next time. And that's what causes us to call them back and be like, hey, you ready for another round? You know, I got such and such. Well, they're, they're doing it to you. They recognize the fantasy that you have and they play to it. And it's a individual case basis. So, I mean, the really good ones are going to always be like a dream because they understand that that's what brings you back is they fulfill a deeper desire than others that don't try as hard but i would put that that dream you're saying is actually a fantasy that you want played out and yes i the mean prostitute call is it what you like doing call it, it what you like i'm just saying the tendency is for humans to dream and want something beyond what they have something that's better and uh i don't I think that, that applies to the globe i just don't and i think it's in your mind <laughs> well i mean if you want to take it to brass tacks, everything could be in our mind. Absolutely. Okay. Raising a good point. So, I mean, that brings us but to then... well, that brings us to our opinions, which are all we have. So, let's not knock them too soon. Well, yeah, everybody has an opinion. That's why the saying goes, and opinions are like assholes. Everyone has. Them. Yeah, but they're all we've got. in the aspect so back to of square one. back to square one if our opinions are all we've got they're the explanations of the facts we see in the world around us that each of us have we all have the same facts our, we draw a different opinion from them but, so you know, opinions are subjective right yes as all of all, everything about perception is subjective to change subject to change rather Okay, if something, a new theory or a new way of looking at something comes out and everybody sees it as that way, then it yeah. is no longer subjective. And what, what subjective. makes, a, what makes a good theory, what makes a good theory is how many predictions that it makes that come true. That's what makes a good theory. Not whether it's true or not. Science has never been about trying to find objective truth. It's about sitting back and letting those things describe themselves. That's, that's what it's about. And if you can predict... The things you see um, better than other people with your with your theory with your setup, then it doesn't matter if the reasons you think that setup are true. 
uh, because that setup works and gets you predictions. So we could be all the all the math and all the geometry and the trigonometry and calculus we use that we have deduced from the way we think the heavenly bodies are and the shape of the earth is that could all be a big misunderstanding the earth could really be flat somehow and um there could be people totally avoiding all that and obscuring all the information and using secret methodologies that no one's aware of at all that that could be the case but it's a much more complicated answer and much harder to control than uh you know humanity has a, a broken state and nature a fractured nature more like uh, how the bible describes and we're having trouble getting along but you're as basically you're saying that we don't know how they do it but we do know we've been figuring this out for two years oh how do they do it well watch the entire uh, flat earth uh, scenery and what people talk i about. i have that, that's not how they do it i'd like to know what you think of how they do it well, they uh, invent something like radio communication. Then they uh, which build works towers. And what, and they, how does that can work? Can I finish, please? Yeah, you but I'm asking. Me to I, yes, something. yes, and I'm you're not answering it. Now. You're not answering it. I want to make sure we stay on the same page. Okay, this is where goodbye. You always do this. Screw you. Okay. Thanks for being here, Arwen. Nice to have you. Hopefully you will return at some point in the future. Eh? I don't know. I'm on a truth for... Inf uh, no, I'm on a truth. I'm on a search for information. That's what it really boils down to. I side more with the flat earth model, just on the site of flatness and water lying level. Yes, I'm aware of the globe argument for it. But... I'm not so set that I'm going to drive right on my driver's license, flat earther type shit. <laughs> so what, what can the flat earth model predict? In the sky, I would say nothing, not How necessarily about? nothing, but as far as in the, uh, the realm of the sky and our celestial bodies, if you will, uh, the flat earth, I see problems with it, just like the globe does. I'm not oh. so adept in my understanding of what exactly all those are or how to come across figuring them out for the flat earth model. But I'm not so worried okay. about the sky so much because we should be able to measure the curvature and stuff here, right? And we can and do, and it's not hard. It's very mundane and boring, actually. But, uh, and I mean, we can go into that if you want. What? Curvature. Sure. I'm interested um, in learning all I can. So, I mean, the, the furthest distance you're ever going to be able to see on the planet from the ground level, you know, standing on your two feet. Um, right, at sea level? is uh is looking over water that's the furthest you're ever going to be able to see because water is the flattest and lowest average object i mean there's not much to look at looking out over water but you can see th much further over water usually than over land because land changes and uh does not and it very importantly does not cool the air immediately above it so the air immediately above the surface of bodies of water tends to be much cooler. And there's a thin layer of air that gets cooled by the coolness of the water. And what that does is it causes the light to bend around the surface of the earth much more readily. It doesn't happen perfectly, but it causes observers to see much further and warped images. And so you get things like uh, lighthouses being seen from, you know, like, approaching a hundred miles away things that are ridiculous from even with uh, masts like a sailor on the top of a mast with a telescope or a periscope that goes up in the air wouldn't still be able to see that because there'd be too much curvature but sometimes you get distorted images of things like lighthouses and other bright objects um or and see, i mean there are some photos of uh of lake michigan that's not quite 
it's not there's no point a hundred lake michigan isn't 100 miles wide but um there's the same principle happening there you have a warped magnified image that is visible from much farther than it it typically would be and it's because of the conditions of the water and that's how refraction plays in to seeing long distances over water uh, it's not play in in the same way when you're looking over land because it doesn't it doesn't happen over land the air doesn't run into this cooling effect and causing the light to travel differently so if Can you're I standing at, this real quick yeah uh so you're saying if i was standing over an area of flat land not see i should see curvature uh, if you can see 69 miles uh, perpendicular to your point of view on the horizon, there is one degree of curvature there. And that is 100% uh, consistent uh, on average, no matter where you go on the planet, and is directly visible on water, because water reflects the shape of the Earth. And this is where I go back into, well, I'm not super scientific, and uh, to be honest, you kind of lost me in the middle there, but I've been trying to keep up. But um, that's where I'm not here for really debating, just learning. All right. Um, a lot yeah. of the times... A lot of the times people bring up density and buoyancy as an explanation uh, to replace gravity with, but there, and those I are... I believe that replacing gravity for the celestial part, but we still have to deal with the 9.82 meters per second squared. We uh, well, you can't... There is, there's still gravity in space, but you're 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 moving at a momentum greater than nine point meters per second squared, so you don't ever hit the planet. What are we talking about? We're talking about orbiting. So you said when you go to space, gravity like you understand gravity there or something? No, I don't believe in gravity in space, but I do believe in the thought of. Uh -huh. At least using the word gravity to explain why things drop at 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, great. Um, well, they, they do it in space, too. Things drop at that rate in space, too. It's uh... Well, they would if it was a vacuum, though. Well, and wait, hold on. If things drop at 9.8 meters per second squared in space, where's gravity coming from? Oh, it comes from the Earth. It comes from the fact that the spaceship and the Earth are made of mass. They have mass. They are made of matter. So they, they have an attractive force, which plays out at 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, the spacecraft is moving so fast that that acceleration matches the pitch and inclination change, the curvature of the Earth. Okay, so you're talking about how things are falling, but they're not falling because they're flying. No, they are falling. They're falling at the rate of Earth falling type stuff. Well, right? it's it's a function of the shape of the Earth. It's a gimmick that because the Earth is a ball and its surface curves continuously and changes constantly, uh, it constantly changes the momentum of the things in orbit around it. It's It's kind of like, an infinite motion machine, but not because you can't capture the motion from that process. It won't, because if you want, if you tried to take energy out of that system, you wouldn't be able to. You'd deorbit. You'd fall back down because it would slow you down enough that the acceleration of gravity would bring you into the atmosphere. Right. Okay. I'm I'm kind of falling out. Bear in mind, I apologize. I am at work right now. I'm able to, you know, I'm very, I, not very, uh, yeah. I'm alone when I work, so I'm able to do, you know, multiple things at once. So if I'm not 100% here, I apologize. That's cool. I would, 
I would like somebody else to come into the the debate so that I don't have to be the only one offering up uh, <laughs> arguments, if you will. So that's for you all that out there in the chat. Come on, get up in here. It's a good opportunity for me to do a plug, so I'll do exactly that now. So if you would like to join the debate live, there is a link in the info box below this video. If you are new to Nathan Oakley's channel, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support this channel, there is a super chat, so feel free to stick some dosh in there to support this channel. And I'm gonna hand back over, as I say, if you would like to join the show, there's a link. You are welcome to express your views, and all I will ask is that you do not swear, and if you do, and if you are ejected, that you are welcome to rejoin on the next stream. So I'll pass back over to these guys. We will see if we get any more rhetoric. Lewis, uh, can I ask you about Newton's law of universal gravitation? Sure. And in the fact of I've I've played around with the numbers a little bit. I kind of understand the uh, the formulae, if you will. But I'm having an issue with how it relates to reality. Uh, well, those formulas are simply measuring the rate at which objects go back down. Like when you move an object and fill it with potential energy by picking it up, it now has the potential to fall. But that's only because there's the force of gravity. So those equations are just a measure of, okay, of that process and... over time. Okay, now, my issue is the example part of it. Now, you say, yeah, I can drop something, and that's where the equation is showing it. But in a more uh, controlled system, I guess? Because as far as I see it, is the equation gives you a number, and that number is supposedly whatever it is, the, the orbiting mechanic or whatever. So again, what do you, I'll, I'll say, what do you postulate is uh, causing things to fall down here on Earth? Well, uh, I've listened through the 10 debates prior to this. Uh, as far as I can see, I'm not 100 percent sure, but I have mildly started looking into that. Thunderbolts project that uh, Mr. Grim V was talking about and how it irrefuted gravity and trying to figure out if that I mean like I said I'm only very mildly uh, researching it so I don't have all the the information to say but I was wondering if that could be transferred into the flat earth model to show electromagnetism through plasma and the ether to simulate gravity on a flat plane uh, you could try. I mean, you're free to try and figure that out, but I would say that would never work and you would not be able to do that. Um, Grimm's and model relies on the shape of the earth being a ball, first of all. Why? Uh, because it, for all the same reasons I do, his, his misunderstandings about the world in relation to mine are not uh, about the shape of the earth. They're about electromagnetism and the subtle differences between all the invisible forces that we see uh, the effects of. So you have gravity, you have electromagnetism, and you have the strong and weak atomic forces. And those are the four forces that we observe in nature. And the two last ones make up uh, chemistry and uh, quantum mechanics. We, that's where we look at those effects. But even in quantum mechanics, you get this this randomness that's caused by the motion of uh, the subatomic particles themselves. Because okay, we but can't. It, yeah. But why does it rely on it being? Why does it rely on it being a globe? Why can we not use electromagnetics on a flat plane? Well, because in his model mass has something to do with electromagnetism and in the okay, flat earth yeah. model uh, mass does not have anything to do with gravity and so the argument from his from Grimm's point of view is that gravity 
is part of electromagnetism. If I'm not mistaken, that's essentially the claim he's making. And, and like flat I earthers said, say I... gravity doesn't work. So, I mean, you have a whole lot of different explaining to do to make up for that, to say, well, this is electromagnetism and this is how it works on the flat earth. Because from his point of view, it's just a special type of electromagnetism that is a function of matter. But matter does not seem to exist in the minds of flat earthers in the same way that it does for me and Grimm. And I don't think Grimm and I have the same perception of electromagnetism and matter quite either. But I'm just trying to represent what I think he thinks. And that's fair enough. I'm not very intelligent in the ways of everything dealing with this either. So, I mean, we're just speculating, I guess, at this point, no? Um, I'm not really speculating, I don't think. Um, I'm saying why I think some speculations are bad, but I don't, I wouldn't speculate on uh, science that I don't know about. And I would, generally speaking, go with the science and trust it as long as I understand it and can make, if I could set up an experiment or make a prediction based off their models and it come true, then that's, that's what matters. And, you know, if I can understand it, I'm going to be able to do that. So I would say it's much more likely, given my personal experience. Now, I know this may be solipsistic of me, but given my personal experience and success with the world using science, uh, it makes me think people who disagree with it don't understand it rather than actually have proved it wrong. I would say that's a fair uh, assumption to make or assertion. I'm not sure which one's which. Yeah, and it's an uh, let's see. So my main hiccups with gravity are in relation to buoyancy and density and why they are affected differently if gravity was to exist. Okay. You know, well, why a very lame example is like the helium balloons they rise while the oxygen balloon falls mm -hmm. um, but they're both the same balloon size both filled with the same amount of air hypothetically well it's not air it's gas fair enough i apologize for my uh inaccuracy in what i said so i mean like helium helium is the second lightest element on the periodic table and recently i didn't think this would happen this is a little tangent uh some flat earthers that i've been talking to in chats are starting to actually deny chemistry and molecular and atomic theories altogether uh which i mean puts them in a very uh questionable boat especially when they try to explain things like the water cycle but uh that is a tangent like i was saying Mm -hmm. Um, uh, what did you ask or what did you say initially? I'm sorry. Uh, dealing with buoyancy and density in the oh. place of helium and oxygen in right, balloons so. of the same size filled with the same amount of gas. Right. So, I mean, it's that they're, they have a different type of gas in there. They have the same volume of gas in, in two balloons, but one gas has a molecular has an atomic weight that is much less than the other balloon. So even though there may be, uh, well, no, actually, there's less. There, there's less helium. There is literally fewer atoms of helium in that helium balloon than there are in the oxygen because there right. can't That's fit what makes as it lighter many. Than air. Right, exactly. So you have the effect of all the air around it pushing it down and it rises like a bubble uh, or, or pushing trying to get underneath that balloon it's the air pressure surrounding trying to fill that vacuum or the the low pressure pocket and so it keeps rising until that until it pops because it, it'll cross it'll cross its the boundary where it's it's neutrally uh, buoyant but before that happens the rubber will probably get out because helium is a lot lighter than air. Yeah. And I mean, the, op the oxygen, um, 
I mean, that's heavier than air already, so it's going to fall. Well, it's the same as air because we live in oxygen, no? Oh, uh, well, only a little tiny bit of our atmosphere is actually oxygen. I think it's like 10% or something. Okay, well, uh, in this hypothetical example, I was talking about just like not exhaling into a balloon, but say taking a tire pump and airing up a balloon. Oh, well, so it a tire been, pump. It would have been the same as us, no? No, a tire pump doesn't have oxygen, uh, have a way to get you pure oxygen. So I a tire wasn't. pump. No, that's what I'm trying to clarify is I wasn't speaking on the terms of pure oh, oxygen. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. All right. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the weight of the rubber falling in that case because it does have. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I mean, that's that's so, interesting. So in that case, actually, let's let's change the example. Right. So let's take an okay. uninflated balloon. That's the same exact dimensions as another balloon. Right. But we fill one of them with air and then you see which one falls faster. And then you can see how the air aerodynamics of that play into the situation. And you can right, learn, so hold, hold, it, hold it for another things about the mysterious invisible force that you see causing the objects to fall. Now, in, now why, why, uh, why gravity? I guess. Why not what? electromagnetism? I mean, I can't. Never mind. I take that well, back because I can't really speak on it. So, if you yeah. want to just ignore that, go ahead. All right. But I mean, I've I've thought similar things throughout my life, and my physics teacher uh, beat it into my head at one point uh, that 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 they're not the same, and that's just the theory of it. Um, they, the teacher never said that it couldn't be this, the way that it is, but physics as it's currently understood cannot make predictions by assuming gravity is part of electromagnetism. And when you do assume that, you run into problems because electromagnetic uh, forces tend to have a pair opposite force to go with it as well. There's... There's a cycle of forces involved with electromagnetism. So we've been joined and, by uh, Jonathan Roberts. Sorry to interrupt you, Lou. Um, sorry. So just say a quick hello to Jonathan. Good to have you here, my friend. More people? Yeah. There's no way. There it's, uh... Yeah, it's all good. If you can just pop, pop yourself on mute when you're not talking, if you would, Jonathan. But yeah, we're hearing yeah. you loud and clear. Hey, you doing all right? Good to have you here. Uh, you were saying, Lewis? Um, that gravity doesn't have, as we, as far as we can tell right now, an opposite opposing uh, force cycle. So you have uh, the if if you have two positive magnetic fields, they repel. If you have opposite magnetic fields, they attract. We don't have uh, a similar way of looking at gravity now i mean we've come up with the concept of concept of dark matter dark energy uh recently which makes it with the claim is that the universe is expanding faster all the time all the th all the things of matter are separating from each other and receding from each other at an equivalent rate or, or not an equivalent rate but relative to how fast the an object moves away from one object to another, that's the same ray, but it's an accelerating ray all the time, uh, and that could be an answer as to the uh, the opposing force of gravity there. But it has not been presented that way, and uh, it's not really. Well, get on out. it, there, Luis. Man, come on, make a name for yourself in science. <laughs> well, I'm not totally confident. I'm just that's just my understanding of it. Right, and I'm here purely speaking. Uh, just to speak on, I guess, flat Earth side, I can't do very much. Hopefully, we can get somebody of, not to say, I don't know, more to say than I have. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, let's 
see. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, Sean G, I thought your gravity has things fall, the earth comes up at the same rate. Um, well, you know, you know about inertia, right? Objects at rest tend to stay at rest. It's inertia is the tendency for an object to not want to adjust its momentum. Mm -hmm. It wants to stay in the same motion state that it's in. So when you jump, for example, uh, you have much less inertia than the earth. So you move much more readily than the Earth does, but yes, Sorry. the Earth, the Earth in could fact just does move. Yeah. Sorry, could I just interrupt? Did he just say um, about the uh, the flat Earthers understand that the Earth is rising up um, to account for gravity? They're rising up through space. Is that what you just said? Because no, that's, that's not. That was not the argument he made, but I have heard that one before. Had, that argument I haven't heard made by a flat earther in a very long time. No, any, no, any. Because it's completely bollocks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it is complete bollocks, and it's it's only from the flat earth society you'll hear that. It's just so that they, the first the thing you put into the search engine, if you put into Google, you know, flat Earth, you will come up. The top result is Flat Earth Society, and it's designed as a co-opted co agency to um, designed to put people off with such ridiculous things as, you know, we are flying up the other way, and uh, that's what push it, that's what the force that pushes us down, and they get the image of a um, upside down truncated. Uh, Come well, basically, it's, it, yeah, it looks stupid. Um, and I think it's just designed the whole, the whole, um, the whole flat earth society is there just to put people off. They just think, oh, God, you know, what? Well, that's their answer for gravity. I'm not even going to look at the next thing that they say or the, or whatever. Anyway. Nope. I mean, well, we were rising up at enough to equate for 9.82, wouldn't we, A, see the stars moving down instead of in a circle, and B, wouldn't we be smushed to the ground as we accelerate upwards? Well, that's yeah. what, yeah, I mean, and that is what the explanation is for. It's supposed to say, well, you're in a car and you don't feel yourself pressed against the seat unless you're accelerating forward and changing rate. So it's when you're getting up to speed that you feel that pressure going back to your seat. So in the same way, the arguments for the Earth accelerating upwards at 9.8 meters per second squared. But, I mean, the problem with that is you have a continuously accelerating Earth, which is a tremendous addition of energy into the whole thing forever. Right. So it's like, how fast are we moving? We just right. keep moving faster and faster all the time. We um, ain't moving at all. <laughs> right? Uh, We're not moving well, not at all. Like that. Well, we, we, we hold separate opinions. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I... that was, so, I was re just responding to Sean G and he was trying uh, yeah. to, he was trying to prod my understanding of gravity. Uh, so, uh, what was I just thinking about? It'll come back. All right. I'll do another plug if you don't mind so if you would like to join the debate live click on the link in the info box below the stream and you can join and express your views I will try my best not to interject um, other than to say um, I've forgotten your name the guest who's got no icon if you can pop yourself on mute just when you're not chatting that'd be much obliged just so we don't get your door creaking and whatever it is that's going on that'd be really great um, so yeah if you'd like Talking to support to the channel stick some dosh in the super chat and if you're new to Nathan Oakley 1980 click on the subscribe button for flat earth videos and interviews I'm going to pass you back to these guys and if you'd like to join the show live click on that uh, link in the info box and you can debate these guys right here and right now
Hooey. Um, but I mean, if the stars back to the accelerating upwards earth, if the stars are, you know, billions and trillions of light years away, uh, no, I don't think we'd be able to see the stars moving, even if we were accelerating towards them like that. Um, for the same reason that we don't see the parallax and the stars as we go around the sun, it's because the distance around the sun is really small compared to the distance you're looking at towards the star. So going around this area doesn't cause like distortion there. It's just like looking down a road, a really long road and closing one eye and opening the other to see if you notice a difference in the change of position way down there no, or, step, no, just, or, or, or just moving your head like that. Like it's, you're not going to see the an object down there appear to have parallax. Is there any way you can tell us how they came up with these figures to say that the nearest star is X amount of light years away? Or right, what, um, what's your take on that? Um, they they use a couple of different methods and intertwine them together. So there's a process of trial and error to figure out. Uh, so there's a couple of things that can affect the light. It, it comes down to looking at the light and analyzing the light coming from the stars in particular ways with different types of telemetry. And they'll give you different results because they describe different things about the light and you can have different effects. So if the star is really far away and the acceleration away from you and the star you're looking at caused by the expansion of the universe is is great enough it'll cause the light to change color and be a more reddish color and that has to be taken into account when you try and figure out how far away it is because it's it's kind of like uh warped it's its initial value so the close things they don't have to use the added steps and i'm i'm not totally sure if i'm right on that you could probably look it up and you might find that i'm wrong about some of these things but it comes down to analyzing the light and the position of where it is in the night sky in relation to the observer. So, um, so what would you say to the Aries failure and the Michael Morley experiment? Oh, well that that was try that whole experiment was set up to see if there was an ether that the earth was moving through and if there was it would cause uh, something some little thing in the experiment to move when when they did something but nothing happened and so it was deduced that the ether does not exist but i can see how if someone's understanding of the ether is entirely different than the conception of the ether at the time the language would completely confuse them and somebody might look at that and think well my understanding of the ether is not disproven by this experiment now Lewis, uh this I, I just recently heard about the, uh, this morning the Sagnac Sagnac experiment. What is that? that? I don't... It's uh, I guess an experiment similar to Michael Morley's experiment, um, but instead of trying to see if there the Earth was moving, you know, having a stationary thing, they moved the board and rotated it, and they found. Again, this is, I just heard about this this morning, so, you know. How do you um, spell it? Uh, beats me, man. <laughs> Sanyak. S-A-G-N-E-T. One more time. S-A-G-N-E-T. My book. But I heard it uh, postulated that it, proved that there was an ether. It certainly did, and it proved that the um, stars are rotating, not us, depending on what you want to believe. Okay, well, the, his, the, the result of his experiment can be explained in a few ways. I mean, I, you'd need to know how perfect his mirror was. If there were any 
any mal malformations on it at all. And you could do that by simply analyzing the light as you slowly rotate the whole thing to notice how those uh, the fringes of interference change. That would be very easy to do. So there, it could be his mirror. It could be um, stuff. Yeah, the mirror might not be clean, might not be perfectly shaped. Those things would need to be made for sure of. Um, but if well, he consistent, if he does this on, you know, a hundred different mirror tables and gets the same consistent results of interference every time, then you know we might we might have something there. This is something that's been re repeated. It's testable. It's measurable, and it's been done hundreds and hundreds of times. And nowadays we have even more um, better. Uh, interferometers am i right in saying that is the correct word i think that's right um i mean i don't see how this would prove ether assume the mirror is perfect right how does that prove ether pass i'm From going off what i'm going off what it says i i when i read the, read the results and watch the youtube videos when people break it down oh well i break it down for myself um like i just i googled it here and i'm looking at it like this is from what i heard is the rotation of the table causing a light um the light that was split to move at a slower rate in one portion is what proves that the ether is there because it's moving through the ether as the table is rotating it, slowing it down. This is what oh. I heard. Is, uh, no, I, I can't. I'm not a scientist that has done this, so I can't speak on absolute absoluteties or whatever. Well, you know? the the direction of travel of the light as the table turns is. Uh... It changes relative to the other to the rest of the beam of the light. So you have a table moving in one direction and the light changing directions on this table, which means at some point you're going to have the light traveling in the opposite direction that the table is moving, which means from the points where that's happening on their two reflective surfaces that that beam of light is has been bounced from. It's tra the light's traveling physically a further distance because the wheel is moving and it's in the opposite direction. Actually, I flipped that around in my mind. It's when the wheel is moving with the light that it's traveling a further distance. Does that make sense? So you could have the same effect as if the light were being slowed down. It's just because it's traveling a slightly further distance in one spot. Hey. In my head, it makes sense, but I mean, that's the danger I mean, zone, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the time, yeah, it seems like uh, the last variable is, is us, so that's why peer review is so important. You want to get everybody else to make it so that they're also the last variable, and hopefully you can find the common ground. Fair enough. We... Yep. I mean, that's, that is what science tries to do. It does, in, yeah. To the best of their abilities. I mean, uh, yeah, but I mean, perfect. it's a process that most of us don't even employ at all. So, I mean, they're employing, a, it's the process they use that is that is good. It's not them. It's the process. So, I mean, anybody could do it. It... it what makes a good scientist, I guess, is how much time it takes them to do it. Because, you know, time is everything. Makes sense. Well, I'm going to get out of here because I don't want to just sit on mute for all of you to see. So <laughs> I got to well, get back to work. Nice meeting you. Yep. Have a good day. Nice meeting you guys too. You know, I hope to come on maybe as a little bit more of an intelligent uh, debater. You know. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for fun. having me on. Yeah. It was a real pleasure. Thank you for being here, Kendall. Hopefully, we will see you again in the future. 
and I'll plug Hopefully. again if you'd like to join this stream we've been going for about an hour and a quarter now so maybe three quarters of an hour left of debating time if you'd like to contest either of the two current panellists Jonathan Roberts or Lewis Hackett feel free to do so by clicking on the link in the info box below this video. If you'd like to support the channel, hit the super chat, and if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. So, let's talk about weather. Why, why do you think weather happens? Uh, well, we're told that it's the uh, spin of the Earth, correct? It's not quite just that, but why do you think? Why do you think we get these weather systems that tend to move in, uh, starting well, in the east and moving west? Well, my my belief, my belief is that um, we are on uh maybe not an infinite plane but um we are like a geothermal pocket carved out of the ice if you like um and hey there may be other ones elsewhere and the, what's to say that the wind isn't coming from a, another factor that we're not aware of but it's just science has um given us the the globe and with their pretty uh, pretty easy uh, answers for it. Um, they weren't easy. Uh, well, it took people okay, a long time then, to come up with that. Spin of the earth, and then what, what, what else do you say creates the weather? Uh, the sun constantly causing a, causing a hot spot on one side of the planet. The uh, spin uh, you, of the planet. And yeah. uh, the fun yeah. and what is in the atmosphere? You don't just mean the wind, obviously. You mean everything, you know. Yes, so, storms, rain, storms, rain, 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 everything. It's it's all a direct result of the tremendous amount of energy added to the Earth by the sun every second, and how that energy is radiated back out into space, and what the interaction of the border on the morning and night side of the planet uh, have. There's a, there's a unique interaction because there's a higher difference in the temperature and air properties immediately on the night side turning into morning side, as well as on the daytime turning into night side. Um, but those two borders tend to be where weather systems develop as the earth turns. And the, to put it in perspective, I know a lot of people don't believe in nuclear bombs, but the amount of energy the sun adds to the Earth's atmosphere every second is like a czar bomb, which is the largest nuclear bomb that the world's ever seen. It was made by Russia. So there's like one of those every second. Just It's just that much energy. And so that causes the weather. That's the, that's the ball model. I mean... There's clearly a lot of energy going on in the atmosphere. There's clearly a lot of motion. And I think that requires an explanation. And I think uh, the ball explanation is pretty good. Pretty concise. It so explains the, it. So the, Earth, so the Earth and the... Do you believe that the Earth and the atmosphere are all spinning at the same time or uh, the same rate and then we have the weather in between um well the weather is about make any sense to me. It, it just it just seems you know, ridiculous it it uh the weather is trying to actually reach an equilibrium of momentum with the earth itself because the they're not quite spinning at the same speed but that's only because there's a difference in pressure created by the addition of energy on the daytime side of the planet so that's a disturbance if for on the other hand the entire surface of the planet was not uh illuminated and it was all dark you wouldn't have weather 
at all. Or if the intensity of the light was so bright and the planet was spinning much faster, there wouldn't be enough time on the nighttime side to radiate all that heat out and the planet would just heat up uh, very fast and the weather would become uh, very meshed and it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a, a reaction to reach equilibrium because that would be so far out of reach. Uh, but on a cold planet, the atmosphere would absolutely find equilibrium and there would be no weather whatsoever. Oh my gosh. Dell. So it looks maybe like we've been joined by B on the imaginary curve. We shall see. You've got Maybe. your microphone echoing. How how are you? Oh yeah, good to have you here, Dal. It's nice to see you. Good evening. Good afternoon, and welcome. Are you nervous, Louis? Are you nervous, son? No, I'm waiting to hear what you're going to say. Well, you should be nervous because you're spouting sophist nonsense, wee man. Sort him like out, what? Bill. Like what? Well, let's have a wee start. We'll focus on the claim, shall we? Which one? Since that's the accepted claim, the globe. Okay, which part about it? Well, have you any proof for it? Do you have any measurable proof that it's a sphere? Which one? The Oh, yeah, absolutely. My own eyes. Go for it. Let's hear it. My own eyes. I've seen Your the eyes. curvature. Your yeah. eyes, you can see the curvature where? Uh, anytime you look at a mountain, anytime you look at a city from far away, you can't see the bottom of the city. That's because there's curvature Jeremy! between you. Jeremy! Jeremy! Uh -huh. What do you want, Alki? What do you want? Uh, okay. well, you can stop calling me an Alki for a start. Well, you displayed alcohol. Well, I thought all claims had to be supported, oh, Del. 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 Now, what's your, what's your evidence that I'm an alcoholic? Whoa, Del, this, Del. this is a polite you. venue here. Well, I'm being very polite. Very polite. Yeah. Not well, well, once. You can, you can be more polite. Alky. That's not very polite. I haven't spoken once. Oh, Jeremy, don't act like you've got such a wee soft touch to you. All right, right. Let's, right. let's go back to the to the ball, right? Right. That's that's why we're here. Because the ball is utter lunacy, wee man. It's you have not. I'm sorry that you don't understand it. Absolutely, I understand your sophistry very oh, well. Oh, you do. So what's wrong with it? Nothing. Nothing in direct reality. Nothing in practical reality would even suggest that it's remotely possible that you're living on a fucking rock in a vacuum. Okay. Uh, nothing. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? That's that's exactly what happens. Give me one practical example of what would even suggest it's remotely possible. Uh, well, gravity, the force of gravity. Gravity is just one. You know, if you're just going to use words, I'll just say well, points. But what feel, specifically is a practical example? What, what does you, that you phrase feel, mean? Practicality for all claims, Jeremy, you know fine well. Yeah. No, this, I don't. No, I don't. What this, does? This the fundamentals. Let, let, me, let me speak, okay? Here's the fundamentals. If we're talking about science, science that I talk about is based in natural science. There has to be substance, which means every single claim you're making and every aspect of your claim must be shown practically with substance. Right, right. Is it my possible? question is... No mathematical equations. Okay, no I've heard your answer. Okay, I've heard your answer. And I'll now repeat my question because the answer you gave wasn't the answer to my question. Oh, is it my question is, is, my question is, my question is, what specifically is a practical example? What does that phrase mean? Practicality, substance, Jeremy. So anything I claim... But now you're just saying words. Well, well I'm going to give you examples. Let me finish, I'll please, Jeremy. Just a meaningless phrase. Jeremy, no, I mean, let's finish. Everything that this technology you're using right now, the clothes you're wearing, everything about you is based on practicality. It's based on substance. No, what what, what no, we both no, know is when you no, say no, practical example, you mean a scale model. That's what no, you mean. Well, uh, scale in the model should be there as well. If it's reality, you should be able to show it in any scale. But that is what you mean, isn't it? Let's no, it's it. not. No, it's not. Like, as it, as it, the flat earth. Give saying. me an example. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Of, one at a time. Okay, one at a time. Give me a practical example of a volcano. Jeremy, don't start using miss fucking 
No, no, that was a perfect. That was perfect. Please, no swearing. Retard, right. Max, like whoa, 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 all, whoa, 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 whoa. Just gonna have to stop you all and introduce no, Mr. Grimm. Just one second, gentlemen, please. Just one second, gentlemen. So if I can just say hello to Grim V, pleased to have you here. And please do hey, not what's up, swear. Man? How you doing, buddy? So yeah. Just take this as your first warning, Dell. I will boot you. I just don't want any swearing on the stream. Please do not swear. Did I swear? Oops. So, Jeremy, your volcano nonsense. What exactly is a volcano, Jeremy? And please explain and show us why you know what it is. For you to ask any questions, you can't even present a working model. I'm, I'm asking you what, what a practical example a working model of a volcano would look like. I'm trying to determine. You've asked me for a practical example. I'm I'm trying to determine what a practical example is that would that you would. Accept. Hey, if you're gonna play guitar, could you mute your mic? Yeah, we took care of that. You're muted. Uh, you're oh, muted, come on. Del. No need you're to muted, mute Del. people. No need. Fair enough no to let need you know really about more. it. Are we finished? Are we finished? Fucking Robin. Are you finished? All right. You finished playing the guitar? Oh, let's no. let's talk about water because you like to talk about water. Right. Let's let's talk about what you want, Louis. Son, I'm asking yeah. you. Good. Right, water. All right. So we're gonna talk right. about water so, then. Shut up. Yeah, water. Let's get, I claim let's get it often, mate. Let's get first principle sorted out first. Let's get first principle sorted out first. Okay. We're gonna talk about water. Let's talk about one thing at a time, Dell. Water. Just you agree to, you agree to talk about water. Tell Nathan, is this the best you can do, my man? I mean. Are you just gonna talk and talk and talk, or are you gonna shut up and let the guy talk? I'll tell you one thing about water. It's flat. This, this, this is the desperation, you know, as, as soon as you appear, you get these morons appearing in the Well, just Del, the thing is, you constantly insult You've people all the time, so we're long. trying to stave You're that off. We're trying to avoid yeah. the insults, Absolutely. which Del. is just what you do. Del, yeah. let me ask you, let me ask you. Everybody's just yakking. You make the claim that, I, I believe this is how you put it, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you make the claim that large bodies of water are, are always level. Is that is that right? Is that how you say? It? Yes, water. If it's a, if it's a body so of water, it's not flowing. How have you it. how have you determined that? Well, you can go and check the to yourself. It's well established, Jeremy. Well, how have no, it's you? not. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Are you, are you trying to suggest that at some unspecified scale of the water? The last thing you I'm asking you how you know it. You say all claims have to be supported. How do you yes. support this claim? Because I can demonstrate how liquid behaves. How do you, yeah, but you, yeah, but that wouldn't be a large body of water. How can well, you? So, how do you know a large here's body here's of water? Thing, is flat? Here's the thing: you want to suggest that it's going to change at some unspecified scale. So you have so no I'm way to support this. I am asking you, Jeremy. What exactly? At what scale is that going to happen? You need to provide it because if you're claiming something, well, you need to provide you're, you're claiming it happens at one, mile, at one mile. At one mile, you can see eight inches. Above you need to provide that. One mile you can you detect. Need to provide that, Dal, because you're the one. This is just a bunch of sofas clowns rattling a lot of crap. Anyway, exactly uh, I'm trying to respond to you. one more name and find out what happens. I'm trying to who respond to you. I'm going to shoot out of you 30 minutes straight, dude. But who are you, Roger Rab Rabbit? I'm reading this whole thing just, just to prove you. I'm Mr. Grimm, homie. You better re recognize who the fuck I am. Yeah, oh, you know oh, who the fuck I am. I need, please don't, don't swear. Don't swear. Is a sweary word. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, my bad. Mr. Grimm, your big man, hard man attitude's not going to change anything. You're just a clown, man. man. Yes, it doesn't yeah, need to Del, change anything. Look, if we can, change, if we can avoid change. Change. insulting each other for just know, five minutes and allow here. somebody yeah. to speak and make a salient point, that would be, you know, just right. normal. Right. That would be just perfectly right. normal. So right. let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. Let's you on, tell you. Imagine. Let's imagine. Answer your first question there. And these people are nervous. They're just not listening. So, oh, wow. is there a problem? I can Red, have a you conversation a with anybody. I was fine you until these things are here. Now, are you? You're insulting. I, I, I just got in here. Every one of you is fighting in at the same time because you know I'm a threat to you. So just shush and see if you can have yeah. one time, one and one call. Yeah, sometimes you're there not, are you're not threatening you're anybody. You're just the conversation people and people and being people just rude. jump in. So it's not about confusion. It's the fact that there's multiple people here who aren't working it's together. Okay? Show, That's, That's why everyone's yeah. talking together. We just need to be patient and give each other time to speak. Oh, it's not complicated. Good. So let's just calm down and, and realize that for every 69 miles of horizon, there is one degree of curvature. 
So if you can what's see this, 69 this? miles, hey, hold on, mean, Dell. Dell, mean, hang on one no, no, second, no, no. Dell, you because I'm me speaking. Because you're a sophist. I'm actually you talking. You why. Look, look, Dell, Don't let me finish yeah. okay, what Del, I'm saying, yeah, let him and then oh, you can respond know to it. Finish. You let know me finish, so and then you can respond to it. That's how it goes. If you've got nothing to worry about, Dell, let him let him explain why. If you really got nothing to worry about, then just let him talk. Okay, yeah, all right, Dell. 69 miles of curvature, one degree. Or 69 miles, one degree of curvature. What you got? 69 degrees, 69 There's miles, one degree of curvature. What is the foot? How many feet of curvature should there be from one end to the other over your one degree? From the center, there's going to be about... No, from one point to the other. No, 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 don't do about... Oh, from one point to the other, it's going to go the through the horizon. Degree. There won't be any. There'll be nothing, so it's flat. Right, you have the curvature is measured from top down. From the observer's point of view, down. But it's a ball, Louis. The, the curvature should be everywhere. A sphere. No, no. you don't understand. No, you don't understand. understand. No, you, you don't, don't, yeah. really don't understand. Yeah, you I'm don't asking understand. specifics. The same Del, as Jeremy. Clear. I'm asking for no, specifics. No, you're saying the word specifics. You're but saying the word yeah. specifics, yeah. but you're abusing yeah. it in the wrong Del, context. You don't understand no, what you're talking about. Just because you can string words together doesn't make them correct. We're not going to hear them, Louis. One at a time. Just one at a time. This is why I don't get involved in Well, you can use I'm you can use a ruler. You can if take you can put it in frame. Look from ruler. left to right. You're still but only you seeing. Can it. Where you can have a rational discussion where you don't have this interruption. With yeah, but there is no rational discussion. Yeah, you don't, right? Right? Exactly. You're yeah, bullying people. Yeah. So, they don't have a clue and you're talking. trying to do it here. No. And you're making no. it oh, all yeah. cool. All you do is yell at you're people. You're talking over Fuck everyone. Out of here. You're insulting so, people. Isn't a fucking, it's this, pathetic. Dang it, I can't stop cussing. I'm trying, though. This okay, isn't a rugby so, match, dude. Well, don't come at me. Back to you, what Louis needs to do is oh, verify exactly. Del, I don't need to do anything. You need to listen and be patient. You need to listen and be patient. It's been Del. Jeremy has to explain how many... Del, we don't have to do a thing. Del, we don't have to do a thing. Yes, you do. I suggest you leave. You're not welcome here. No, no, no. It's already done, Del. Let's... It's already done, Dell. We don't need to create a new way to clickbait people That's into getting getting money, do we? Oh, yeah, I guess you do. So Dell comes <laughs> on to the Flat Earth is done, you better jump on to the next and make, little hot. And, like, like, I'll leave. Dell, you're just here for advertising for your own just, show. That's all you're doing. Well, you're not arguing about anything. You're not arguing about anything. None of you are being heard. None of you can be heard. You are all talking over each other. Mr. Grimm, Louie. Please, one at a time. Why doesn't Mr. Grimm and Jeremy go away and leave me and Louie to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation here? Why? Because oh, you sure. think you're going to have a conversation with somebody for real? Well, because I, I was like, having a right. conversation with you. Came you came in calling yeah, everybody you know, names, talking all kind of crap, being a big knucklehead. You know what I'm saying? And then now you're acting like, oh, well, I can behave if somebody stops treating me badly. Shut up. Don't be the victim here. You came I'm in swinging. So you got swung yeah. back on. Now you're going to cry about it. security problems, we man. You're probably a you bullying. So just shut your, your mouth. Leave your at home. Shut your mouth. Shut my mouth. I can't <laughs> You you here here. Tell me one thing that's factual about the flat earth. That'll shut me up. Tell me one just, thing just about your model. Yeah, you you about your flat earth model. That'll shut my mouth. Tell me something factual for a change. Uh, this is that people. Oh, Del, see me goes up go right this is the, the go time. Del. Because they don't have a, they don't have a go. Go. Mr. Grimm. Mr. Grimm, you've asked him a... Hold on, hold on, Louis, Mr. Grimm. It's just... Hold on. You've all just asked him a really specific question. Is it buoyancy or is it density? Just shut him you up. could be respectful. Not you could be respectful. Yeah. Yeah. Be Mostly Louis. <laughs> I've got to be honest. Dell, I'm sorry, baby boy, but you're going to get your own medicine when you're messing with people like us because we don't care about your little problems and your little crybaby money problems and how you're sucking Graham, people. Let him, sure, but you Graham, are let asking him, him a direct question. At, at least let, let him answer. You. So at least let him answer the question without trolling him. I mean, if free to troll him, you know, but by the same token, we can't hear anything. Yeah, I mean, he came in, got us riled up. Oh, God, Louis, you're off again. You can't help yourself. Jeez, man. Put yourself on mute. Get yourself a cup of coffee. We've heard enough from you. No disrespect. I love having you on, but just try to button it for a few minutes. Just let them interject. He's asked, Mr. Grimm's asked him a question. Let him answer it. 
You know that. Why should I believe in your flat earth model? Give me one factual piece of evidence that pushes me towards that area. And don't say anything that you've already said before, because I've heard all that. <laughs> and it doesn't work. I'll wait. Not for too long. Didn't I ask you a question? Was it density and buoyancy? Is that your answer to gravity? I think he's turned it off, honey. Yeah. I would too if I was Dell. Yeah, he's he's just that way, you know. Yeah. He's solipsistic. I'm going to take your advice and go get some coffee. I'll be back. But I, I still didn't find out why, how he knows that large bodies of water are flat. <laughs> Have we calmed down? Have we all calmed down now? Oh, Is yes. The nerves, the yeah. nerves, so you need to stop your yeah, nerves I'm, from getting... I'm glad, I'm glad you're here to check on us, Dal. Right, stop butting <laughs> in. This is why I, I, I booted you from my hangouts, because you continually butt in. Right? Just control yourself. Right? And that Mr. V, he's got nothing to offer. I'm not interested in speaking to him. He's an absolute clown a boy. Right? So let's get back to where we were before we were rudely interrupted. Jeremy, exactly how large does this, the body of water have to be before it will start to display convexity upon its surface? Can you give me an exact figure, please? I already answered that. Uh, Mr. Oh, v, I'm not asking you. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> you punk. I already answered that. Well, the, I mean, that's really, it's kind of the question I want to ask you, Dal, because you, you the, you're the one that defines the large body of water. No. Hold on, let me finish. So what I want to know is what qualifies something as a large body of water as opposed to a not large body of water, small body of water, whatever you call it? Well, before I go any further, water defines level, Jeremy, okay? Liquid. Oh, my God, water. no, answer the grim, other question. for God's question. sake. I'm answering it. I'm answering the question. Water no, defines not. level. Everyday direct observations and practical use. In bathtubs. Is beyond any shadow of a doubt that water does not have the ability to conform to the exterior of any object and display it upon the surface. Water will seek and maintain its level. If there is motion upon the water, like wind, waves, you will have waves, you have movement on the water, but the body in itself will be level from one point to the other. Okay, That's how do you know that? How do you do that? I run a bath every single day. I run at the right, but that, the bath is not a bath isn't a large body of water, is it? You're, well, you're Jeremy, this is the point. Specifically said large bodies of water. You're saying that, Jeremy. I'm asking you to be specific. No, what I'm... Size, what size does a body of water have to be beyond what we observe and test in everyday reality before well, the first... At least a mile well, to see when we eight eight inches, test, right? When we test... At least a mile, right? To see when eight we eight test, inches? When we the test mile. in everyday reality... Nathan, this is a shit show, mate. Nathan, this is an absolute shit show. We're not a moderator with consistency. I'm you trying are, to answer the question you know, now. The fact that these clowns are buttoning in every two sentences and no answer on the question that they're, they're putting... I'm trying right. to answer the question. But they're welcome to, Dale. They're welcome to. All I ask You're asking is how much, you don't how much swear. Do you see? I said eight inches in a mile. No, so he's not. He's saying he's saying he, he's saying that when he looks at a, a bath, it's level. I know. And if and I'm, I'm claiming that the ocean is curved. I can't believe he's that dumb and I'm granting him. Yeah. Jeremy, it's not just a bath. That's liquid. That's how it behaves. Right, but that how have you determined that the bath is level? What do you mean how did Because it doesn't even run out anywhere. But how have you determined that the water is level? Because let me flesh out the point for a second, okay? If if we if we are as proposed on a uh, on a sphere which is twenty four thousand nine hundred and one miles in circumference, how much curvature would you expect to see in a bath of water if it was curved as is as is proposed as a, a, like a, 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 with an ocean? How much curvature? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Prove, much, prove your let me, let me finish the question. I'm nearly there. How much curvature would you expect to see? And what tools have you determined used point. to determine if that curvature is or isn't there in point. your zero, back? Zero, 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 two, one, eight, six curvature. In the right, back. so how do you know that that is or isn't there in your bath? <laughs> you can tell with his own eye. 
Because Liquid does not have the ability it's to naked. be like that. But how do you know this? Uh, because I can test it every single day. So how are you days. testing it? What process are you using to test it? How, how can you test something that you don't... Uh, the, the Liquid is more accurate than any instrument you could possibly come up with. But how do you know that? How, how are you determining... It applied every single day in reality. How have you determined the water in your bath is... No, Jeremy, Jeremy. Jeremy, just stop with your sofas. This is more of your mental. Your claim is it's levels. There it goes. That's that's a good argument, Dell. Well put. Your claim is it's level. You say all claims have to be supported. This is this is why I don't agree with you because there is no discussion. There is no rationality. There is no logic. There is no science. You're just a clown. I'm asking you a simple question. How do you know the water in your bath is level? You are so dumb. I'm going to donate to you, Dale. It must be hard living. You can't answer, can you? You don't know how the water in your bath is level. This is a claim you make every single week on your show, and you cannot support it. All you've done is look at the bath and gone, I think it's level. It looks level to me. Even though, even though, as Grim has explained, the amount of curvature in a bath is way, 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 way beyond what your eyes are capable of detecting. Right, can you let him respond so now, Jeremy? Jeremy. You make it all the time. This is the oh, entire Jeremy, you're just repeating your yourself. Can you let him respond now? And you cannot support it. It's just a, a just repeating yourself. statement. How can you support that it curves? Ob easily <laughs> observations we can just show you with your own p900 right yeah. he's got to have a bad control bag because these are just infuriating ball bags it's no constructive right there's nothing yeah. happening here apart from but this isn't an argument is it this is just you no, no, insulting no, people yeah, you aren't again, making an argument something. you're yeah. insulting you're an ignoramus i've, I've asked you a question and you're not able to answer it you are a clowny man i've pointed out, 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 out the whole answer. basis for your belief is is based on basis for your belief. i don't have beliefs oh gosh Dell, you, you, you know you obviously do because you haven't you can't tell us what tools you use or how you've measured water. The water is the tool, you absolute it's just moron. The, it's the water is the belief. tool. I take the cotton wool out your ears. The water is the tool, you fucking tool. Uh, how? So, so you're using water to measure the the, the measure how flat water is. It, 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 is that it, right? It, it, yes, water is the measuring tool. You absolute okay. clown. So, and what are you measuring? What am I mentioning? Everything that's constructed is used by it. So Dams are built. Water is what, you're, is what you're claiming. So, Jeremy, do you okay. think your house what, is level? What units of measurement? Level, Jeremy? What units of measurement does is your, you... Is your house level, Jeremy? What units of water? Is your do? house level, Jeremy? Yes, oh, it's God. level. Hey, Del, how is you level? Calm how down, is Del, level, Jeremy? Del, calm down. Um, how is it level? I, I, uh, they use. Uh, I, 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 I was at level. You're right. Yeah, the mimicry and the. I can get you, Jeremy. I would just sweep your fucking neck. You're an annoying. No, come on. Jeremy. That's your last warning now, Dell. No swearing, please. Oh, just calm down and let him answer. Dell, if you can just let him answer. Yeah. Yeah. Rejected. We're pointing out the fallacies that you make every single week. You don't and, and you don't that. like it because you can't bully people. You, no, you're even just an annoying thing, little shit. You're now you're attempting to get Nathan to, to do what you're what to you. Blah, 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 blah. Water is level. No, you're water is a measuring tool. How do you know water is level? How do you know water? You only have cartoons. You have sofas that are level now. You're full of nonsense. How do you know water is level now? Eric Dubai told him so. I have debated him so. What a shit show, Nathan. These clowns are just here to confuse people. They are not going to pro What's cover any professional... Simple. How do you know water is level? What's confusing clowns. about that? Jeremy, you don't deserve me speaking to you, son, until you shut up. Oh, so yeah, leave. nobody deserves you speaking to them, that's for sure. So leave. I'm reacting Nobody's to what ever done to deserve that. that. I'm reacting. So I'll leave. Just, I'll just wait for you to tell me how you know no, water's don't level. Don't why don't you just kick Mr. <laughs> Wee away and kick <laughs> the other disruptive Yeah, why don't, why don't you bully <laughs> people, Nathan? Bully people Del. like Dell and Tina. Okay, Jeremy. So Dell doesn't have to face any challenges that, that bother him. Jeremy, ask your question again. I, I think something, I think he's trying to ignore the question altogether. How do you know water is level? <laughs> because it's been used and applied in everyday reality for 
However long, you're the one that wants to deny. Gonna stop fucking butt. Get to fuck. Fucking wee knobs. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not sure why you reacted that way, but all right. What's water been used for in everyday life? I'm such a calm, rational dude because I'm trained in a sophistry and I think I'm fucking smart. You're just a numpty wee man. Thank you. I am. I'm very smart. smart. Way more credit than he deserves, I promise. But yeah, you're kind of shitting your shitty. uh, Yeah, I'm not that smart. What's the word I'm looking for? Thanks. Shedding your skin, yeah. Yeah, sorry. I've asked him so many times not to swear, and I've just got to bring the hammer down because he just can't control himself. He's just getting too irate, and normally swearing is my example of that happening. So sorry to all who were really enjoying Dell getting angry and swearing. He will be welcome back on the next show if he can hopefully moderate his swearing. That would be even better. I'll take this opportunity while I've got my little sprog on me to say if you are new to this channel, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support this channel, hit the super chat. And if you'd like to join the debate live and contest any of these numpties as they have been described by Dell, then you are welcome to join and challenge them on any of their rhetoric. So I'm going to transition back to these guys minus Dell. And uh, as I say, if you want to join live, hit that link below the in the info box. All right. um, no. uh, if water has been used it's buoyancy, for it's density. Years to prove that water is level by using it, it he's got it he, he's got it right, what he's saying. So I mean but, like what's been what's water everyone, been if water is Sorry. level, you put water in a level. Right, but that's on a tiny, tiny scale, isn't it? And as Grim, as, 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 hold on, hold on. And as Grim pointed out, if we if we are on a on a sphere as proposed, the amount of curvature in a spirit level would be would be so minuscule that it it's of of no consequence. And and that's how we're able to use spirit levels yeah, to build houses. I'll agree with you on that. I'll agree with you on that. Plus, they're in a bubble. They're in a round bubble, anyway. Right, and, yeah. and we also and we also <laughs> use plumb lines as well, of course, on, on in building that would be, you know, perpendicular to the uh, center of the Earth, as it were, or perpendicular to the surface of the Earth. Transgential, yeah. or tangential. Trans- yes, 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 yes. That's, that's a better word. Okay. I mean, the way I think about it is uh, if you're if you're like the size of a germ and you're on a golf ball, like you're not going to see curvature ever. No. Nope. So, I mean, it's no different for us like at all. And you can calculate what fraction of the size of the planet you are. So, well, OK, so what about when you go up in a plane and you're up really, really high and you can look down? You're not really up that high, though. The atmosphere well, yeah, is, like, is paper you are, thin. If you think about no, it, like if we're on a basketball, right? Just try to scale it down. Play on the basketball. Be how thick the atmosphere was. Yeah, so it's I mean, you really can you be. can see the curvature in the airplane. It's just not very obvious. You can see the curvature in the airplane. Yes, Only, you can. Well, no. So why don't we detect the angular? Right, it just looks a little bit curved out towards the edges because it is. You can see that there's a little bit of angular prop, you know, difference or whatnot. Plus, if and I mean, in, more I than mean, the curvature that which flat earthers really want to find curvature on the horizon, which is uh, almost never going to happen because you have to get up, you know, in an airplane, and uh, even it. then, even then, it's, it's like just up. barely at the perceptible level. What how height do you have to be then? Uh, typically, it's around thirty-seven thousand feet. That's oh. the answer that's typically given. I think it's a lot higher than so, that. So it? when so when we get one hundred and twenty thousand feet balloons coming back like a disgusting, <laughs> day, and we get well, those them, balloons show curvature. No, those balloons only show curvature when you've got a fisheye lens, and when you said the other day that you pause it, and set it up where it is not going convex. To concave, to convex, to concave. I'm talking about the ones that are done with a normal 
120,000 feet. How yeah, can you do that? That's not the argument. They, they show those shots. Lewis, shut up, dude. You're still not far enough up in the air. Stop. You're ruining uh, it. Yeah, you, you uh, are, Grim. You're really not. Not to, unless yeah, you're you looking are. at it with a laser. Right. Not to, unless you're looking at the uh, angles of things with a laser. You're not going to be able to detect a point of a half degree with your eye. You know, so when you're looking, so, at, you know, when you're up there, you're looking at something degree. that's happening. Yeah, something just so like a half, we have, we have you know, to rely on that. Point five of a degree of a tilt is hard to notice with your naked eye, you know, over the distance of you know uh, several, you know, dozens of miles. It's not that easy to see. That's that's why. Okay, it's, so so we're yeah. we're having to put our faith in NASA then. So you are saying there's no way that we can detect it. That doesn't mean. Dude, stop saying you can see curvature the way that they're trying to say you can see curvature from such a small amount of feet you, you can't not the way they're trying to say you can you you can you absolutely see curvature from a weather balloon absolutely oh i don't need to the point is is we've got the argument defeated already from six foot off the ground that's true you too of, yeah you don't need to sit there and go along with them on their little trip to the argument world about this other crap that doesn't even matter because none of you can go that high, right? So you can't really tell, and you got to rely on everybody else. Let's just rely on what we can do right here, right? So I'll put a pole in the ground and, uh, you know, in the water, raised up out of the water. We can take pictures of that. We can videotape that, right? We already have. And, and you can, you know, calculate the distance from over water and then uh, uh, deduct from the 360 degrees to – to realize a radius of 6,300 kilometers in 71, you know, 6,371 kilometers. Have you ever heard of the Old Bedford Lab experiment? Yeah, yeah, I have. Pretty familiar yeah. with it. And this is okay. done. We, we reenacted that lit, lit last, this year. People could see all the other way. It was supposed to be all that garbage to drop, but no, we could see it. I'm not gonna have the words refraction, but what what did you you describe the experiment? Who was there? Who set it up? What did you do? D. Murphy was there, uh, and he was one of the arrangers of it. And it's a six mile straight long shot. Um, unfortunately, it is a bit uh, on on basically on a six mile stretch. There should be thirty two feet of missing curvature. When 32 get... feet? No. Yeah. 32 feet? No. Six mile stretch? No, no, no. Let me get my calculator. Do the calculations then. Yep. Anyway, the point is there should be. According to the globe model, eight inches per mile feet. squared. Twenty-four feet. Okay, twenty-four. Sorry. Okay. Well, that twenty-four feet was not there. We could see all the way to the other end, and in fact, we could see further. All right, you're you're forgetting that 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 twenty-four feet. That's <laughs> that's below the horizon, right? The horizon yeah. isn't hell like three it's, miles in. So you have to cut that in half. You have to cut it in half. And we have to know how high the objects being observed were, and we need to know how high the observer was. And we also have to have some form of telemetry going from one of the posts to the other. Yeah, well, why don't you just read what it says about the old Bedford level or go and recreate Because that's not the experiment you did. You did a new experiment, which is similar. It's set up based as the Bedford level, and I understand that one, but I can't know that your results are good unless I see exactly how you set your experiment up. All right, fair enough. We have about five minutes, maybe a little bit longer left, if anybody wanted to get any last-minute trolling in or any last minute flat earth or globe earth or cell earth or hollow earth points you are all welcome to click on that link and join the show but i will be rounding out in maybe about five minutes time i wonder how long this is going to go on for so check what's this debate well no, 
and not just this debate now, what we're talking right now, this debate. <laughs> I mean, the whole debate, you know? How long is it going to go on? I, 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 I don't know. NASA, yeah. NASA are never going to give us the keys to the... To, you, you know, they're not going to give us the keys and hold the hands up and go, hey, whoa, look, you know, we we messed up, you know, sorry about well, that. And I mean... Why? Why would they? Why would you expect them to? Why? And I mean, even even further than that, why would you like? We have all these wonderful pieces of technology that have just been given to us, like cars, electricity, motors, generators, like all that. I wouldn't be able to make that all on my own. Like if I was just born into the wilderness and it was like, all right, looking around at the world, digging metal out of the earth, refining it, like all of that. Oh my gosh, man! The amount of things that are That's done for it. us. On Earth, no, yes, the, but the point is, the point. Look, the point is that there are things that I don't understand, right, and could not produce myself that are produced for me, and I owe a debt of gratitude to the so people doing it. it on faith. You have to take that on faith. Take what on faith? The technology. Well, you, just, you just said about oh, here's your problem with the curvature. Look, i don't mistrust when the car guy tells me what's on the inside of that engine and how it works i don't mistrust him i follow his his advice and i do what he says and my car lasts a lot longer because of it turn around and prove that and 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 if it came to it and you thought well hold on a minute he's lying to me here let's check out how a gearbox works they say it was your gearbox broken you could go and get a manual, you could learn about it, etc. But when it comes to things in space, space travel, we have to rely on their word. Right. Well, okay, I'll use your example. Just like with the gearbox. Sorry, sorry just, just like to interrupt gearbox, one second. I'm really sorry, Lewis. Understand. Um, just sorry. got you presented now, Grim, if you want to make your point, because we're running out of time. So if you want to go ahead and make your point, you're being presented. Okay, thanks. Here's the um, problem with this eight inch drop per mile squared. You're using the line of sight instead of the horizontal line like you should be using. So you, automatically you misrepresent the formula. So of course you're not going to come up with the correct sum. That's it. Simple as done is done. Hello guys. So you don't need to complain about this eight inch mark per mile anymore. Subscribe to my Dude. channel, Jeremy Brown. Oh my God. <laughs> Get off. <laughs> Nathan, thanks very much, guys. I'll see you later. Cheers, Nathan. It's been a pleasure, Jonathan. Thank you for being here. Oh, Jonathan, how we're doing? Talking about if you can just uh, acknowledge that you saw this, we can end some of these stories that keep coming out. Who me? Right. Jamie, right. stop. Ah, right. Hold on. Uh, Flair, just incorrectly applied a since she dropped her mask. Yes, I'm acknowledging that I see in it. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, I mean, that's uh, that way. You know, that might help. That's all I'm saying. There's oh, a lot of things, right. like uh, you know, confronting and exposing some of the shenanigans in this uh, this psyop that's going on here with these fake stars videos. Have you seen those with the twinkly? twinkly aberrations that they show you on the flat earth p900 videos of the stars what they really look like they say yeah, you're out of focus because you can do the same right. thing with it if you've got a telescope out of focus you see the same thing yeah and look how look how those look how the, you, the flat earth community ate those up originally right oh yeah and and that's just part of the um the the point that i'm trying to make about how they feed the psychosis and they're feeding off of you guys and they're trying to give money and clicks and donations and new cameras and you know well not me, not. And I'm, I'm, I'm not giving they're them not jack even bringing correct arguments to the table though they're saying well because the paper clip is blue then the earth must be flat and or because the you know nasa lied about going to the moon the earth must be flat and it's like these are not these are not supporting arguments if people understood that it would be like you know, it, it's kind of strange. You don't hear a lot of people talking about the actual issues about the vaccines and the GMOs and stuff. And, you know, they're, they're about flat earth and round earth now. And you can't, see, you know, we've been saying, hey, this PSYOP is coming around the corner, you know, and they're trying to push this flat earth crap on everybody. And they're going to be hiding the fact that we already know that, you know, there's a discrepancy with the uh, mechanism of which 
uh, rockets would work in space. And there's discrepancies about what gravity is. You know, we've already been talking about this stuff as an electrical phenomena on the subatomic dipole, which would be the, the, the smallest of the subatomic particles. And they would operate. It's a, it's, that's because that's a weak, that would be why it's a weaker force, you know, than, uh, than this regular electromagnetism, which would operate on the full, um, you know, um, uh, po uh, particles. So that's like, a, and it's a different modality. One passes through the other practically. And that's kind of hard for people to understand, but I mean, it's not really when you start understanding, you know, uh, field dynamics and things and how you can pass radio waves through, you know, <laughs> different types of radio waves through, uh, different types of uh, electromagnetic barriers, right? Because like the radio waves could pass through when they're at the proper bandwidth to be, you know, slim enough to not actually be affected by the um, other energies current, you know what I mean? And magnetism, which is also a dielectric. So there's so many different modalities of what's going on out there. It's hard to just say, oh, no, it's not uh, has nothing to do with that or whatever, you know, electromagnetism. <laughs> when it when it's you know clearly it's not density or buoyancy i mean why if it was density and buoyancy alone right then why would the the brick not just fall upwards why would because it's know, heavier it's heavier than the air around yeah it. heavier but what's heavier why is down heavier dude that's the whole point you get it, it now did it, i just wake it, you up to something it, right why is down it, heavier why is when something it, heavier than down if if it's only density and buoyancy, why does the direction down occur? <laughs> right, as we're coming up on the two hour mark, I'm gonna lower the volume on those guys and basically do my final plug to all of you who have watched. A massive, huge, ginormous thank you for joining us live in the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to join future debates, there will be a link in the info box below this video. And if you're not already, subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I will see you all in the next video.